I'm Carl Azuz for CNN 10. With our special summer series rolling on, we have a snapshot for you today of where some other countries are in their responses to coronavirus. As we mentioned yesterday, the disease continues to spread in the United States and abroad, but at different paces in different places. And the tug of war continues over resuming normalcy in our day-to-day -day lives, getting back to business and improving the economy, versus staying home and keeping doors closed, separating people from each other in an attempt to keep COVID-19 from spreading. One university medical expert suggests some U.S. states may need to shut down again. Another says that could be more economically damaging than the first time. A third expert says coronavirus isn't taking a summer vacation, but finding new ways to spread. The U.S. Treasury Secretary says the economy can't be shut down again without creating more economic damage and medical problems. The decisions on shutting down have been up to individual states, though, as opposed to the federal government. So it's hard to say who would shut down, when they'd do it, or even if more closures are on the horizon. The Trump administration is telling Americans to take precautions on their own, though. It advises people to keep socially distancing themselves from others, to avoid crowded areas, and to wear masks whenever they're in public because those can help prevent the spread of coronavirus. The U.S. has seen the most cases of COVID-19, but it's not the only country dealing with the challenges brought on by this disease. I'm Stephen Jiang in Beijing. The authorities here have shut down the country's biggest wholesale food market and declared wartime emergencies in a growing number of city neighborhoods with the emergence of a new cluster of coronavirus cases. The Chinese capital had not seen any cases for almost two months until last Thursday. Since then, they have reported more than 70 cases, almost all of them linked to the market, which used to supply about 70% of the city's vegetables. That's why among the city's more than 20 million residents, there is growing concern not only about their health, but also about their food supplies. I'm Patrick Gottman in Havana. The mayor of Brazil's largest city, Sao Paulo, has been diagnosed with the coronavirus according to a news release from the local government. This is the latest health scare for Sao Paulo Mayor Bruno Covas, who has also been public about his battle with lymph node cancer. Covas said that he is not feeling any symptoms and is working from home. Sao Paulo is the epicenter of Brazil's coronavirus crisis. There are over 170,000 cases there and more than 10,000 deaths, according to local health officials. I'm Atika Schubert in Valencia, Spain, where the beaches are being prepped for tourists again. Next week, the country plans to open for EU travelers, but today, the holiday island of Mallorca has actually brokered a deal with German tour agencies to allow in thousands of Germans, German tourists, in early as a test case. When they arrive, they'll have their temperatures checked, they'll have to show their contacts, where they will be, just in case there is an outbreak so that they can be traced. Uh, but they won't have to be tested for the coronavirus. If all goes well, then Spain plans to open to travelers outside the EU in July. I'm Anna Stewart in London. From today, it becomes compulsory to wear face coverings on public transport, and non-essential retail stores are allowed to open in England. The shopping experience will feel very different with socially distanced queues outside, one-way systems inside, and none of the new measures are likely to boost consumer appetite, a concern for businesses and for the wider economy, which shrank by nearly a quarter in just two months. The latest figures from the ONS show that only 37% of adults in the UK actually feel safe to leave their homes, so it could be a very slow start to trade. 10 second trivia. What is the most popular and most watched sport in America? Baseball, football, basketball, or auto racing? Overall, Americans like football more than any other sport. The National Football League has had an advantage over other American pro sports. It was in its off season when coronavirus closures began, so its games weren't interrupted by the pandemic. At this point, the NFL plans to start its 2020 season as scheduled in September, but without fans in the seats. That's something that most pro sports have in common as they make plans to reopen, though NASCAR has begun allowing very limited numbers of people to watch its events. The PGA Tour resumed last week in Texas without the ambient golf claps of spectators. The National Basketball Association is looking toward a late July tip-off, according to NPR. The National Hockey League expects games to resume in late summer, and a Major League Soccer tournament is scheduled to kick off on July 8th.
Meanwhile, youth sports in many parts of America have already resumed, but they've seen changes too. As states begin to reopen, youth sports are coming off the sidelines, with baseball and softball resuming in Iowa. Youth football leagues in Indiana returning for on-field practices June 14th. In Texas and Florida, all youth sports have been given the green light. But it won't look like it used to. This is the first time anybody from dusk is standing on this new resurfaced field. Kevin McCarthy oversees nearly 5,000 players and 50 coaches as the executive director of New York's co-ed Downtown United Soccer Club. The U.S. Soccer Federation is recommending a phased restart with individual and small group training. We have virtual training scenarios, which we're in the midst of. For months, kids have attempted to do everything from lacrosse, gymnastics, football, even soccer, virtually. But those online Zoom sessions are taking a toll on some players. What have been some of the most struggling parts? They want to be with their teammates, they want to score goals, they want to run around. Here we go, get low, get low. Bob Westbrook says he has been forced to cancel international and domestic tournaments for the 1,000 players registered at the A5 Volleyball Club in Atlanta. He says technology can't replace team building and bonding. For athletes and people that play the game or this game or any game, um, it, it's like a, a black hole. It's a void in your life that you can't find an outlet from. Youth sports in the U.S. generates more than $19.2 billion each year. Billions more than the NFL and more than double the revenue of the NBA. Just three months into COVID-19 shutdowns, sports clubs nationwide have seen $8.5 billion wiped out. I'm concerned that we will not have enough players to, uh, to continue to employ all our coaches if this lasts longer and longer. We're getting ready to pass out uh, several hundred thousand dollars in refunds. We think we're going to make it, right? But there'll be a lot of clubs that will not. As games resume, gone are the days of high fives, replaced now by regular temperature checks. We only have four athletes and in, in a coach at a time on the floor together. Little League Baseball will likely have exits painted six feet apart in the gravel. Each player issued their own bat and helmet, and dugouts likely closed for the season. There's no hugs or high fives. Not having players touch the cones, you know, washing balls, bibs, training at different distances. But it's still a highly anticipated goal that can't come soon enough. When I walk here and see hundreds of players training together again, I think I might get down on my knees and be thankful. Bianca Goladriga, CNN, New York. Heidi Paulette gets 10 out of 10 today. She lives in Maine, and she was having trouble finding puzzles to put together. So she started this neighborhood puzzle swap box and posted about it on Facebook. And since then, the donations have come piling in. She may even have to build a second puzzle box to keep up. Heidi says puzzles are a great stress reliever and a welcome distraction when everything's gone to pieces. So put all those pieces together, and it's not at all puzzling that in the big picture, they fit together to fight card boredom. I'm Carl Azuz, and that's a great fit for CNN.